Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today Apostle Paul speaks about how through, through the Holy Spirit our Lord Jesus Christ called him. Remember that Apostle Paul was the one who led in the stoning of St. Stephen. He was the young man who stood by and held the cloak to those who stoned Stephen to death. And he arrested and imprisoned many Christians and was on his way to Damascus to destroy the church when our Lord Jesus Christ called him to his own service. That's an amazing story. And if we stop to think about it, how often does our Lord Jesus Christ find his greatest teachers and his most devout followers among those who are sinful, <coughs> among those who appear to be his enemies, among those who are far off from him. And yet, he knows the innermost hearts of everyone. And he knows how to cover and remit their sins and make them truly disciples of the living word, to preach life in the midst of death and hope, in the midst of despair. And think how much Apostle Paul had to suffer over so many years for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many times he was lost at sea in the ocean. How many times he was beaten, thrown in prison, betrayed, cast out, left for dead, and finally in the end to give up his life for the sake of the gospel. And yet how he started out as one who was a great persecutor of the church. On the other hand, Paul, James, and John, seeing the miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ, simply followed after him. And the great apostles, all of them, and yet who was it that had the greatest influence and who had the greatest role in broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ across the world? Was it not Paul, the one who persecuted Jesus Christ who became his greatest disciple? Paul, the one who sought to destroy the church, who built more churches than any. Paul, who blasphemed against the name of God, who proclaimed the glory and the love of God to all the world. It's so easy to see Paul as being hopeless. Of course, if you're one of the more fanatical Jews, he was a great uh, student. And yet he had to abandon everything also to follow Jesus Christ. But we also ourselves, brothers and sisters, we do not have so much to abandon, and God does not walk, ask us, as Peter, James, and John, to walk away from our families and all. Nor, as Paul, does he ask us to suffer so many things for the sake of his name. But he asks us to walk away from our delusions and leave them behind like Peter, James, and John, and Paul also. It was their own delusions, their own imagination, their own fantasies, their own egos, that they had to turn and walk away from. We ourselves see that easily we fall into some kinds of delusions and some kind of illusions about what life and reality really are. And when we come into the temple on Sundays and come here to offer the liturgy and pray, we're also asked to turn and walk away from our delusions and our images, our imagination about what reality really is, and come and open our hearts to the truth of life itself, to the truth of life and light, life everlasting, and even to the truth of the life we live in this world. How many can look back upon the struggles to earn a living, to pay their bills, to buy a house, and all these things, and see a trail of struggle, sometimes heavy, sometimes with a lot of stress, and always with a lot of labor. And think sometimes that I wonder if there were some elements of life that I missed out on because I did not understand. But perhaps sometimes I was troubled and worried needlessly. 
or worried and was troubled about things that were not necessary. So when we come into the church itself, into God's house, to turn to those things which are really needful. Remember in the house of Mary and Martha when Mary sat at the feet of Jesus listening to what he had to say. And Martha complained because she was so busy with so many things. And Jesus said, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen the better part for herself, which shall not be taken from her. That is to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And think, how will we put this into practice in our own lives? And this is the great question, and one that we talk about time and time again. Brothers and sisters, when we come into this house this day, for the divine liturgy, the ultimate reality is that the gates of paradise are open before us, and that the fruit of the tree of life it blossoms before us, and that we come here to receive that fruit in the Holy Communion. And that we come here in that faith and in that hope, looking, as it were, through the royal gates into paradise, and anticipating that paradise which waits for us when we depart from this life. And this is the ultimate reality. The other things that are real but not completely real, <coughs> that are shaped by our imagination, that are shaped by our fears, and that are shaped by so many forces around us. To put those fantasies behind us and come now to the truth and to the